Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Good morning. Mic check, mic check. Mic check? Yeah, there we go. Okay. I don't know what the heck was going on there, but I think we're good to go now. Good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome. How's it going, Raphael? Everybody else so far? Good morning. Hopefully you all are able to, uh, or have been able to rest up and get ready for the day ahead and all that fun stuff. As per the usual, before we jump on in, uh, make sure to read through the morning prep PDF on the right side of the screen there. Very important to go through and understand everything that is inside there. <clears throat> Also, a quick note for you all before we jump on in today. Uh, if you're watching on the YouTube side of things, it does have between like a 5 and 30 second delay, which will definitely impact the timeliness of what I may be talking about at any given moment. Uh, and then, of course, we want to take a second, to, like we do every day, to thank all of our new members, subscribers, academy students, VIPs, and everyone in between. Thank you all so much for the support. I'm super excited to have you all on board. Welcome to the SSFTG family. If you aren't a member yet, there are a ton of different options to check out. Uh, one of the easiest ways is to join as a YouTube member uh, with the join button below the stream. It gets you in the chat room and the YouTube community board for stock charts and crypto charts and all that kind of stuff. And a bit more behind the scenes and what's going on. Of course, if you want to understand how we do everything, check out the Day Trading Academy along with everything else that we have waiting for you over at SSFTG.com. So if you're here for the first time or the thousandth, good morning and welcome. I hope you are all ready to rock and roll alongside of me today analyzing these crazy markets of ours. Let's take a look at some news, or the 100% lack thereof, yikes, uh, and uh, look at some charts and see what's all going on for today. <clears throat> We've got a pretty... Uh, you know, a pretty wild back and forth going on here. The markets are going a bit crazy, but before we jump into that, don't forget to grab the morning DP levels. Those are posted for you this morning on the Major 7. NASDAQ has a big gold, crude euro, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. Mm. Nice. <laughs> As far as the news is concerned, you really don't have a whole lot going on. 8.30 is the big one with the, the initial jobless claims uh, forecasted as 348,000, and there's, like, nothing else happening today. So, pretty straightforward there, uh, as far as that's concerned. Uh, looking across the board here, we'll start off with charts then. There's not really a whole lot to worry about. Uh, on the NASDAQ side of things, we did end up getting that beautiful rotation back to the upside all the way up to the major objectives, almost all the way up to the 15,000s. What a crazy move. Um, beautiful continuation up. We were only anticipating up to like the 14,800s. <laughs> I mean, you know, it went up there. It went up there pretty well. Feeling kind of stupid for getting out. <laughs> oh, well. Um the overall rotation that we've got going on here, like we've been talking about, we've got this movement to the downside with wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and wave five. And when we were looking at this kind of like inside, like, oh man, you know, what, what is this? Is this the finalization of wave five? Are they going down? What's happening here? And it just kind of looked like they were trying to stretch it out, but then it kept going further down and that created this rolling corrective phase that we were left with inside of here. Now, once they completed that fifth wave, this was the concern point. Like, okay, are the sellers going to try to drive this down to a new low? Because if they're able to, then we've got ourselves a new trend, right? And, well, a, a continuation of the previous trend, at least, and we're starting to roll to the downside. But we didn't get that. We got the higher low. We had all of the sellers starting to get trapped into the move and rotating back to the upside. And with that rotation back to the upside, the bulls rallied it all the way, all the way back up, and that really confirms that now we've got a possibility of a new wave uh, to the upside. This could just be wave one, wave two, and it's in wave three, which means that there's a lot of room. If we're looking at the rotation off of the lows, let me move this so I can see. There we go. Uh, the, I mean, it was an almost perfect L5 bounce off of the lows, and after that rotation up to a new high, it's anticipated that eventually we'll have a deeper pullback, and maybe that's today, especially with the way that this thing looks. Just look, I mean... This thing's crazy. Well, either way. <laughs> I mean, if they're going to start the pullback, this kind of looks like the time. <laughs> it's not going to lie. Uh, anyway, it's still very early. The market's just screaming higher. Uh, if we look at it from the bottom all the way up to the initial high first, I want to see how the market responded. We had the earlier POC, which is sort of down at the bottom. And again, that's only going up to this high. So just sort of gauging what's going on here. Buyers were already sort of eh, 
kind of picking up on that and the sellers were losing the fight. If we rotate up to the next new high, we have the POC, which shifted a little bit further up. So if these sellers were stuck down here, they've now re-upped again, meaning that their average point would be about in the middle. And you'll notice what missed. And the fact that that didn't get filled means that all of those shorts are getting squeezed to the upside. And, well, I think that's fair to say that they're getting squeezed pretty hard. They're in the juicer. Uh, and I'm not sure how much juice is left at this point. Uh, but if we roll it up to the next high, we'll see if anything's changed. No POC change, and no POC change. So uh, they might end up building volume up here for a little while, but realistically, the sellers are still firmly under the foot of the longs, and the longs are still heavily in control trying to get this to keep going. Uh, big zone of contestion is going to be up here in the 14,950s to 15,000s, obviously, big psychological level. We'll see what they can do. Over on the S&P, good rotation back to the upside, and this is also a breakout of that wedge formation that we had. Wave 1, Wave 2, Wave 3, Wave 4, Wave 5. That's the super clean, easy peasy. Uh, then we've got that nice wedge. And we've got our breakout continuation to the upside. So as far as this breakout continuation, now we've got to see, how do they want to play this? You know, they want to keep it going to the upside. Well, that's kind of the case right now, but notice where we are right back to the top of where that previous wave four was if the resistance is going to stack this is where it's at and again this kind of goes back like what we were talking about a second ago it it feels like this might be the spot for sellers to try to push it back it's way up in the stratosphere so the risk has got to be really small um but the reward is monstrous sheesh not enough for me to build into futures or anything on the short side, but something to at least pay attention to for right now. Longs are still in control. If we're going over on the gold side, the market's still maintaining this bear trend, technically speaking, right? But we're running into some trouble here. If they're going to keep it going, they've got to break down. Uh, looking at the volume perspective from the bottom, which was technically that was a higher low, uh, the peak happened there, and they haven't done anything since then. Uh, really, it just appears as though we're kind of hustling and bustling around the POC. We've got the shorts that are attempting to take it down. Maybe those are longs taking profit, but later on, possibly shorts trying to take it lower. And from that perspective, I mean, if we look at it from that perspective, all the way up to the top, we can see that the scalpers did get their targets filled. So, I mean, realistically, the sellers did get their, their, their targets filled if they were scalping it. And I, I don't know that that's a trade that I would take. Um, but now that we've got the sellers out of the way and the bulls are rotating back to the upside, it's a bit of a concern as to why this bearishness is now coming in. Like, wait a minute, what, what happened? I thought, I thought the bulls were taking over, you know? Um, it feels like something might be a little bit off. All the POCs are stacked up in the middle, and that's right on top of settlement. And there's a metric truck ton of resistance up at the highs. This just isn't giving me the warm fuzzies to be a bull right now. Like, over here it was, you know? But the longer this thing doesn't do what it's supposed to, the less I have some faith in it. They got some new highs, but now they're starting to break down the new lows. Ugh, man, gold's a bit of a mess. Crude oil, I tried, uh, yesterday we were looking at an L2 continuation, which uh, it's hard to see from here, but was right inside of there, and that was right at the base of that previous area that obviously failed, rotated down, ended up taking a loss on it. Uh, not a huge loss, but small loss on the breakdown underneath, uh, and when they came back up, allowed traders to exit on the return. So it could be a loss, could be a break even. They could even be possibly uh, positionally positive, depending on how you manage it. I just didn't really want to mess around with it. I wasn't at home. Um, so for me, the exits were uh, right around break even. The initial entry kind of scalped out of it, scalped out of it, entered more, scalped out of it, entered more, dumped down, entered a little bit more to draw the average down, exited, done. Not really much else. So now the market's starting to cross down. This move lower still obviously is in or within a bull trend in the, in the wider perspective, but we're gaining some momentum down. They've got some difficulty. We'll see. Over on the Euro, still getting absolutely crushed. Uh, this is just poor. The poor Euro, man, alive. 
uh, the, the moving average isn't even crossed to the upside. Like, it just, it, there's nothing all the way to the downside. These look like my moving averages are bugged again. But either way, um, we've got this downward momentum. And the thing that makes me concerned is that this looks like it kind of splashed over. Like, ooh, you know, like when you push the bowl and it finally stops, but the water inside of it doesn't. <laughs> Kids find that out pretty quick. Uh, that's kind of what this looks like. And a lot of times, that ends up being the bottom. Now... If we zoom back, that was not the bottom back here. But notice the distinct difference. The market didn't necessarily speed up, or when it did, then it kind of slowed down into the low. This sped up all the way down and is starting to kind of continue back. This could easily be another flag breakdown, but this could also be a little bit of spillover that would cause the market to want to rebound a bit further up. And the only reason I say that primarily is because of the amount of resistance that up, that's up here just begging for it to come back. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's a head and shoulders inside of there too, but there's a lot of longs that got stuck on that move. And if we look at an average, I'm sure there's an average somewhere around that bull pop here. Let's see, where did the longs get crushed? Ooh, okay, never mind. Now hang on, I don't know if the data's correct. Oh man, they just bottom weighted all the way to the lows. Yikes, okay. I don't know if my data's correct. I don't think my data is right because it's saying that there's no volume that was traded inside here. And, I mean, obviously the market traded there. So, my data is bugged on this one. I I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's frustrating. Uh, for me, my POC goes from the very top all the way down to the very low. And it still says that there is no volume that traded in the middle. So, obviously something's wrong here. Um, <laughs> whatever. I, I, I would assume that longs are stuck from somewhere inside of here. And given the fact that they haven't been given a chance to get out, that would be a very likely area where the market's going to try to reach up to before it's able to churn back lower. Around like the 1.16100s. Maybe. I mean, it doesn't have to. But. Uh, Bitcoin and the, the whole of the crypto side of the world is just on an... In <laughs> wow, what a tear. Shiba's over three thought it's over three thought pretty soon we're going to be doing that over nine thousand meme i remember doing that for the nasdaq um we're, we're gonna have to do that for uh wow it's, it's over nine thought could you imagine man just yesterday it was in the thousands Whew. what a mover anyway um the the crypto market is just screaming higher and there's been no pullback like none and and any time that the market is, I guess, what you could call pullback, it just went sideways. That's it. And even in the larger scheme, what's it really done? It's just going back to the previous swing low. It's not really pulling back. It's just kind of going sideways. The same thing that happened over here. When they made it back down to that area, that's where all the support came in. Eventually, these bulls will lose their ground and we'll start seeing a deeper pullback. Uh, but as it stands, at least, off of the, let's see, off of the low... We've got the first rotation off of an L5. They pulled back into a perfect L2 bounce. Continued up for an L1. Rallied up. I, don't, I doubt they hit anything on this pullback. Yeah, they, but they couldn't even hit the L1. The next pullback. They finally got... Holy crap. <laughs> right there. That's where all the algos kicked in. Gotcha. Check mark. All right. Uh, the L1 bulls reinitiated back in the move. Good enough. So we know that along the way here, we've got the L1, we've got the L1, and now we finally got that third pulse in the L1. Now we've got a fourth. We're continuing up. We're not pulling back. So this is going to be one of two things. We continue the bull trend and we hold this L1, which right now is hovering around 53,000-ish, give or take. Or we get what is structurally healthy, especially given this monstrosity of a blow-off here, uh, a healthy pullback. And a healthy pullback would park the move right back into 50k. That doesn't have to mean that the market's totally reversing or anything, but it is in need of a healthy pullback. Uh, and even better would be down into like the 47s. That's not to say that it can't just keep going higher, of course. Uh, Ethereum also going higher. A lot healthier on Ethereum. The only real big window that they left behind was over here, and that was during a swing breakout. So, I mean, that was kind of the power move that they had built up for the right about in here, I would say, was the uh, where they coiled that spring up. 
a little bit early. You'd think they'd coil it a little bit higher, but either way, it was enough. They broke through that area, and we've springboard and continued back up. If the market's going to pull back, that would be the most likely area, around 3175 or so. We do have some structural interest from a spike and channel perspective as well. And it is slightly breaking above the highs, which would suggest a deeper pullback. A deeper pullback in that case, from that perspective, would be 3325. A couple different points of interest. Either way, deeper pullback is what I'm looking for right now on crypto. Initial profit taking on the rally. Take profit into the move. And let her let her go. Hey Letty, how's it going? Good morning, good morning. Everybody else so far, good morning. All right, starting off and uh, looking across the board here, I am not in the long on the NASDAQ anymore. I exited that where I thought was going to be the top at around the 758, 780s. Um, <laughs> it, it did end up going a lot further than that. Uh, geez, I mean, what do you do, you know? I, 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 try, I, I tried my best. Um, overall, fantastic rotation. They had a vindictive little pulse back to the downside. This is not something that is unheard of. Um, this is something that the NASDAQ is very famous for, in fact. But once we had that initial V-bottom pulse, they had the rally up, kind of reconfirmed it. A couple a couple additions inside there. Not as many as I wanted in hindsight, though. And uh, just went rip-roaring up. I mean, since, since then, that was... This thing's gone up another, even to where it is now, 550 ticks. Jeez. <laughs> uh, I mean, the bulls are just screaming this thing to the upside, obviously. Um, the one big thing that we really want to pay attention to now is with this back and forth momentum, we first had this pulse up, and this is where a lot of the shorts got stuck, right? And when the shorts got stuck right about there, they were thrown a bone and given a chance to get out. If they didn't realize that they were been, being thrown a bone, they weren't thrown anymore. They either had to eat the loss... <laughs> Or they're still possibly stuck short. Yikes. Um, so if we're continuing this back to the upside, looking at what they may be doing. 14, 5, 20 quarter. Let's go up to the next. 805. Go up to the next. No change. Go up to the next. No change. Go up to the next. No change. Up to the next. No change. No change. No change. Wow. So they they are incredibly stuck right now. Um, this is creating a situation where they're still stuck with an average point possibly back down here. That's not good. Now, that said, they've got a lot of volume building up here. So I would wager to guess that if we rolled this a little further forward, ooh, they haven't shifted it yet. What do you want to bet they do it right around the open, huh? Either way, we do not have a POC shift, which means that they're still stuck from way the heck down here. They're, they're in a real bad way right now, those shorts. The longs are milking them. <laughs> Holy crap. Over on the S&P, uh, we've got that just insanely strong continuation to the upside here as well. Uh, I did not hold on to the S&P. The S&P was being utilized as a hedge. Didn't need the hedge anymore. Got out of the way. Uh, although I did pick up a couple longs in there for obvious reasons. The market's reversing. Uh, but no, no long-term holds on that. That was just purely scalps. Uh, the swings were on the NASDAQ, for me at least. Um, but that said, the S&P still had a monstrous tear to the upside. The big consideration that we've got going on here is in... Okay, I was going to say, can I zoom out a little bit further? This is that wedge that we saw on the 15-minute chart and the longer-term structural breakout. And if we look at the overall base that they put in on that low, uh, really, it was around pretty much an L5, basically. Uh, they missed the new high there, came back down to the L5. But that right there, that extra confirmation bounce off of that L5... That really is a big clue that, yeah, okay, they, they were actually buying down in this. It wasn't, it wasn't pretty, <laughs> but they did it, right? So with an L5 continuation to the upside, we haven't had, I mean, have they even had an L1 yet? No. So, 
I, I mean, I, I, I love the move on the S and P. It's it, it's great, fantastic. That's awesome. Um, Peachy Keen, I'm happy for it. I'm looking for a deeper pullback. <laughs> I would love to see a pullback to settlement 43.55 ish in that area. It would be a really nice value dip at the open. Now the market's churning, churning, churning. Crude oil, uh, structurally with that gargantuan V bottom, uh, good old hindsight, should have held on to that one too. <laughs> um, you know, what are you supposed to do? Uh, we've got the overall rotation to the upside. In the short term, it's not a bad continuation up to try to at least get back up the settlement. If we're looking at the bigger picture, though, this is where things are a little bit on shaky ground. We've got that rise. We've got the increase in price. We've got the channel. Everything is lining up pretty nicely, right? Blow off of the lows. But whenever I see this kind of momentum, especially when they challenge these previous V tops, or V bottom tops, if that makes sense, one concern that always creeps into the back of my mind is that we're going to get one of these. So being a buyer way up here is challenging, right? I certainly don't want to do it with any size. Uh, I would much rather see a pullback about a dollar down from where we are, really. I can see what's going on. Not really much else happening. From a swing perspective, I mean, we're just so far away from everything useful right now. Gold's in the middle of Nowheresville. Crude's got some distance to go. There's just not really many swing opportunities at the moment. The swing opportunity was yesterday, long, on the indexes. Now today, it's just kind of picking up the scraps of what's left. Not expecting much, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> but we'll see, you know, hey. Nice pullback so far off of the top of this move. Where'd the session start? Right there. <clears throat> That's gross. And you can see it on the uh, on the 2000 tick. It just hasn't stopped going up. It plotted that first low at the beginning of the day and just kept going. It's wild. Anyway, pretty residual continuation to the downside. Some candle gaps open as well. Uh, well, open. I, I should say at least in, in existence. <laughs> um, I gotta see if any of them are actually still open, though. That one filled. And that one actually just filled almost to the tick. So all of the candle gaps to the downside are out of the way on this most recent drive lower on the S&P. On the NASDAQ... They... They're actually creating another candle gap right now, but uh, that's a big one right there. Yeah, they may be, <laughs> they might be creating another pretty big gap here. It's uh, some of the object, most of the objectives at the moment to the downside seem to be accomplished. That definitely doesn't mean that it just has to stop going down, though. It could just keep falling apart.
Alright. Got five minutes, about four and a half minutes until the open right around the corner here. There's not really a whole lot going on. Kind of the maybe the quiet before the storm here, but NASDAQ just one direction so far. Straight down. S&P, one direction so far. From the top, at least. Straight down. Although... Gotta make sure this is actually drawn the right way here. A lot of times when we get these pullbacks, we'll see some bouncing in and around the L1s, but we'll inevitably break down to the L2 and possibly the L3. It's a heavily overextended market that needs a healthy correction. Be realistic in your expectations here going into the open. What a move down, holy cow. Just getting smashed. And here it sits. <laughs> the Euro, I just don't... Uh... We'll see what the euro wants to do, but uh, currently Shiba is at thirty four hundred. <laughs> Let's just look at this friggin' chart. Wow! That's absolutely insane. Oh, uh, let me turn that off. Shiva just keeps on going. I said, I can't get over this move. What a monster. Hey, how's it going, Bram? Good morning, good morning. Got about a minute until the open hits. Oh, right around the corner here. NASDAQ's getting close to the L1. Hey, Vicky. Good morning. Everybody else so far, good morning. Still in Shiba? Nice. To the moon! <laughs> I'm holding runners. I'm definitely not in full position size, though, no. Uh, my average for me is uh, 648. So, I mean, we have when we have a rally like this, I, I mean, sure, I could hang my hat on it and just let it go and, and hope that it turns into a million-dollar trade you know, for for very little amounts of money. But is that really a strategy that I can bank on? You know, sometimes, yeah, the one out of 100 times, sure. But uh, the other 99 times, I would just, I would much rather take the profit on it and let the last residual go. And maybe that <laughs> can turn into a lot more. I'm a big fan of holding free runners. Uh, not a huge fan just holding massive open positions in hopes that it goes up to a massive objective when it's already at my target and beyond, you know. Yeah, I'm holding about 
ish, give or take. Hard to complain with that kind of move, you know? <laughs> NASDAQ dipping down into the L1s. This is where the longs are going to try to get something going. The initial test, we do see the bulls bounce off. Maybe another unicorn like Bitcoin. How, how crazy, how perfect would it be that a meme coin like Doge gets dethroned by a meme ear coin? <laughs> I can see this rabbit hole getting pretty deep. <clears throat> wow, bulls. All right, well, they're at the L1. Sheesh. What a bounce. No remorse. Still screaming higher. Seller's still <laughs> massively stuck. Although I am curious, if I creep this forward, did they change it? They still haven't moved that POC up. Okay. Big pulse to the upside. Big pulse higher. Very little pullback so far. Uh, and the the first candle of the day is effectively just one Jumbotron bull engulfing candle. So far it's engulfed like the last 30 minutes. Just an absolute monster screaming off to the highs. That POC up at the 928.50s or so is the major area of interest. Although we are running into some resistance at the DP. Let's see if they're able to crack through. We've got about two minutes left on this first five minute bar. Oh man, that POC on the S&P is <laughs> real far down there, holy cow. S&P is back up to the highs. It, it couldn't even get anywhere near its L1 on the S&P. The NASDAQ did tag its L1, and that was it. Just went screaming higher from there. Pushing into where the... Well, this whole move down started... So likely a lot of profit taking is going to be going on here. If they can break through this, then eh, NASDAQ will probably reach up to the top. Scalpers will be eyeballing these quick little washout flushes, which seem to be all that this move has so far. Uh, it's very, very far up though, so be careful holding bags. This is when it pulls back further than you expect it to. A lot of traders will think, oh, I'm going to buy the washout, and then it washes out twice, you know? <laughs> S&P's pulsing to a new high. First five-minute POC is locked in 83 and 30... Wow, 388. That's massively confusing. Okay. <laughs> NASDAQ and the S&P both very aggressively rallying to the upside. Looking good. Sheesh. 
Shiba still going crazy. Nice little pullback on Litecoin here. I like the dip on Litecoin and, and the inactivity on Doge, I feel like, is a precursory move. Uh, kind of a coiled up spring. They're waiting for Shiba to finish. And where do you think all of the Shiba meme, coin, meme coiners are going to put all of their coins when the pump is done? What better place than Doge? It hasn't gone anywhere. Pump Doge twice! Here we go! <laughs> Just saying. And then when the Doge rally is done, pump it back into Sheeb. <laughs> and by then, maybe we'll have a new meme coin, you know? Man bear pig coin. <laughs> I don't know. What are some other memes from back in the 90s? <laughs> I can't have to dig back in the uh, dig back in the arsenal. Early 2000s, late 90s, somewhere in there. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Alright, nice secondary pulse to the downside on the NASDAQ. Looking for the bulls to push back against all of the earlier longs who just got freaked out of their positions. Nice secondary pulse. This is that next major zone of interest for the market to pull back to. This is that deeper pullback that a lot of traders weren't necessarily looking for. Um, but it, it is. That's how the market operates. Value traders are going to be looking to pick up on the dip. I'll take a little bit of weight reduction on the rally higher, but... Realistically, this is a nice zone for a launching pad on the bulls. POC bouncing around a little bit, but the first five minute POC is down to 883. Yeah, it kind of looked like they were going to pulse that down again. That's why I wanted to reduce a little bit. Ooh, they didn't go down as far as I thought they were going to, though. Ah, crap. <laughs> hmm. Okay, well. See if the bulls can break back above the 928.75s. Zone of interest was down in, like, the 15s where that, that kind of standalone volume pulse came out. I guess it's more closer to, like, the 11s, but in that area. Can't quite reach down there, can it? <sighs> okay. I mean, if the market goes higher from here, that's fine, but... I was kind of hopeful. <laughs> Going for a little bit of a deeper move there. We got about 20 seconds left on this candle, and at the moment they're trying to fight over the POC up here at 28.75. It's going to be very interesting where they close this over the next few seconds, unless they can get away from it. Nice secondary pulse to the downside. Oh, man, it got really close to the area. <laughs> I wanted it, but it didn't get quite enough down there. <sighs> okay. Well. It's 
again, I mean, if the Bulls just, if they just take it and, and run, then fine, I'll take the objectives, but I, I wanted that little pulse down to the 11s. What did they get down to? Thir <laughs> 13. <sighs> All right. POC fiddling around, kind of bouncing around a little bit, not really doing a whole lot. Bulls breaking through the POC. Trying to get the continuation pulse back to the upside. Beautiful rally back up. Uh, I'm going to have to exit all of them just to compensate for the first loss that I had to take. I, Like I said, I wanted to reduce my risk a little bit on that dive. Um, so... Didn't really play ball the way that I wanted it to. It's all good. And you can see a lot of traders are doing the same thing. They're like, man, really? It's kind of a... <laughs> you can see it backing up real fast off those highs. Everyone's kind of on edge. POC built up on the top of the S&P as well. The S&P hasn't even pulled back. <laughs> so. All right, market just kind of getting stuck. Not really doing a whole lot of anything yet. Um, what do you think the potentials are on the... So, as far as the, the different crypto markets are concerned, I mean, obviously, we've got Shiba up in the corner because that thing's going freaking crazy. Um, but if we look at some of the other big players, right, like Bitcoin and, and all of those, uh, and I'm not going to take up the whole screen, but we can do it up here like that. Oops. There we go. Um, if we're looking at Bitcoin as a whole, we had this really nice rotation from the top to the bottom that built up that POC in the middle at around 46. And it really didn't change unless you go inside of all of that price action with the higher lows. Then it did. Uh, but aside from that, that was really kind of the point of contention that they had to fight over. And when it came time to break through there, uh, it just, it rifled through and never even pulled back. So... I mean, there's there's a heck of a lot of bullishness uh, to the upside still, but the problem is Bitcoin's kind of already taken off. So if you're looking at markets that still have potential value, uh, then I, I really can't say that Bitcoin is, is the one. Now, if you look at other markets like Litecoin, as an example, if we zoom out to the bigger picture, Litecoin hasn't really had its, its major pulse, right? Not comparative to what we've seen in all the other markets. Litecoin has a lot of open room to the upside. It's not it's not like Shiba seven bajillion percent, um, but it does have a good you know hundred hundred and twenty percent to the upside as far as room, or at least like eighty uh, or potentially you know a little inside of that uh, up to the next highs. I mean there's there's a lot of decent room to the on Litecoin, and it's just a slower moving market that usually plays catch up later on. Um, other markets that I really really look nice right now. Um, outside of Shiba would be Doge. Look at Doge, right? And like we were talking about, I think that's likely, if anything, what's going to happen. They'll just take the profits on Shiba when it starts pulling back too much. And where are they going to pump it into? Well, they'll probably first put it into Bitcoin, but then transfer that Bitcoin over into Doge because it's still cheap, right? And then we can watch that go up 300%. So those are the ones that I'm kind of eyeballing at the moment. Shiba's already taken off. That one's already been an incredible move. I am 100% happy with, with the way that Shiba moved. Uh, but now we've got to find the next one. And from a meme perspective, that kind of fits. I mean, where did, where did Doge stop? 69 cents. <laughs> you know, where was everybody trying to push for? for uh, $4.20, you know, or, or all of these little meme variations. They might not be able to do that for a little while on Doge, but at least with Sheep, they're able to. 
<laughs> you got to turn your 11-year-old brain on when you're looking at those markets, because that's how they operate. Who would have thought? Everything I was learning when I was six was going to be technical analysis when I was 30. <laughs> that's, that's, hmm. I would have never, would have never guessed. <laughs> These are my people. <laughs> Bulls are still rallying higher. They still seem to be picking up the dips here, but... It seems like this is a really challenging spot. A lot of the Bulls kind of gave up on the high. They're certainly not having an easy time. S&P's climbing back up to 275. That's their POC. The NASDAQ's trying to make a break for it. Back above the POC. It's a fist fight. Crude oil's not really doing much of anything. There is a possibility of a low probability swing long on crude oil. Low probability in the range of around 39% likelihood, so objectives should be at around uh, 2 to 1. And I'll buffer it a little bit uh, and say it's probably closer to like 37%. But again, if we take that math, just I know we go over this a million times, but it's there's a reason. <laughs> At 37% likelihood, you think of like, what, why, why in the world would you take that trade? 37% uh, likelihood at a 2 to 1, right? 37 times 200 is 7,400. The other losses, 100 minus the 37 times 100, pretty easy math, right? 6,300 minus 7,400, you'll have to flip the numbers because they're positive. That's your trader's math. It's a positive expectancy of a 1,100. That's incredible trader's math. So, because I know that the probability sucks, but my reward is two to one, and it's around a 37%, I have to show up every single time. Because the trader's math would say that I would be literally insane not to, <laughs> based on probab probabilistic trading. Now, you'll notice I'm not going full bore or anything, um, <laughs> but crude oil already burned me to the long side. I'm not about to recommit. I'm taking it purely as a swing. see if we can milk I might have to go just ahead of the two to one slightly for the high closes opens just to be safe but it's a marginal difference but enough of a probability churn to make it worthwhile five ticks for one percent is worth it <laughs> NASDAQ still herky-jerking around. I mean, again, we know what's going on. The bulls were really nervous. They didn't get the follow-through that they wanted. They panic exited on the initial pop higher, myself included. Uh, if they didn't, the market came back, kind of threw them a bone, and they took that bone, and now it's rejecting back down again. The bulls haven't let off the gas pedal on the bottom, though. They keep buying the lows. As long as that's the case, then it'll keep it propped up. But we're starting to get underneath the POC now. We're starting to migrate a little bit lower. This candle's going to close, and now uh, we're underneath the POC now. The S&P is under the POC. There's a lot of issues here for the longs. All it takes and all the sellers need is for the longs to give up a little bit. Just get the ball rolling. Maybe back in this pop to the POC.
Well, crude oil was close to the entry point. Um. <laughs> Hmm. S&P back up and retesting 275. are starting to lose their ground and we're starting to see those arms getting tossed up in the air help help grab my arm I'm sliding the bulls need to prop their friends up or they're gonna start uh, they're gonna start cliff diving hope they brought a parachute uh oh one leg went off the side <laughs> It's like an action movie. <laughs> Sliding down the side of a like a building while it's collapsing Mission Impossible style, you know. Ten o'clock right around the corner, although there is no news. Um, really calm and quiet today on the news front. The market's got plenty of volatility, uh, regardless of that quietness. S&P, big pulse above, back up to a new high. Here it all sits, not really doing much of anything. The euro's still kind of hanging out sideways, gold sideways, crude oil, eh. A little bit of a pushback off the top there on the NASDAQ on that new high, or new intermediary high at least. Crude oil still waiting for the swing to the upside. Uh, crude. Parkway. <clears throat> NASDAQ bulls rallying back above the POC now and closing above. Possibly even pulling back and holding it around the 2875s for the longs to get another continuation move. The S&P really hasn't stopped going up. It didn't have anywhere near as much pullback as the NASDAQ did. A couple little bit of volatility pulses in there, but... Bought your first NFT today, huh? Nice. What'd you get? Cool picture. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. I am familiar, yes. Okay. Gotcha. I'll have to check that out. When did they release that? I don't... To be fair, I don't use Pancake a whole lot, but... <laughs> I'm a little out of the loop as far as, uh... His cake swap goes, but... I know what the chart looks like. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, definitely. Huge audience. Okay, I was going to say, crude oil, I swear, if you no-fill me, I'm going to be real upset. It bounced off, it didn't fill. Bounced off, it didn't fill. I'm like, oh no, it's going to be one of those days. Alright, anyway. So, it's it's an all-or-nothing type uh, swing. 37% likelihood of success, 2-1 to one to the upside. Uh, depending on the multitude of contracts, there is more upside potential with 3-1s, to ones, but the 2-1 to one is the higher of the probabilities. So, that's the one that I'm going to go for. Uh, in order to maintain about 37%. Uh, yeah, Weeble does have... Um, yeah, they, they do have crypto trading in-house. Um, and they offer Shiba, if, if you have it. And actually, I think... Uh, let me double check. I think I just saw them send me another thing saying that their referral program is back on Shiba again. I think I have to pick it from a drop down though. Hang on. You all. Yeah, it's five bucks in uh, in in Sheeb right now too. Yeah, let me see if I can. Uh... I got you. That's right there. Um, that's the link. I, I posted it in YouTube, and obviously everyone in Discord already has that link too, but um, it is a referral link, so I get kicked back from it too. But right now, if you use that, they, they have... I mean, Weeble always has all kinds of different stuff going on. They've got free stocks and all that, but right now you get, I think it's five bucks in Shiba, and I don't know if you get to pick which one you use, um, but the last thing that I saw was five bucks in Shiba, so, I mean, you can definitely tell it's gaining popularity, but you can trade it there, uh, and that's one platform that you can use. Uh, another platform, Crypto.com, I believe you can buy it on the app. Uh, I I'm not 100%, I'd have to reconfirm on, no, yeah, 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 on the, on the Crypto.com app you can. I was, I was getting mixed up between uh, Nexo and Crow. Um, I mean, there's there's quite a few places you can pick it up, but if you're looking to, like, actively intraday trade, uh, like like we do with the NASDAQ, as an example, um, then I don't know that I would necessarily use Weeble for crypto in, in that capacity. Just because you're going to deal with things like slippage a little bit more. It's it's not their forte. It's like going to a pizza shop and getting a salad. You know what I mean? Um, it'll work. But it might not be the, the best route. Um, <laughs> it's just you know, throwing it out there. Uh, the one that I I like for uh, for intraday like trading and, and more of the scalping side of things is Femex. Which, actually, I think they have a referral thing, too. What do you get if you refer somebody? Is it worth sharing it? I don't I don't share referral links unless it's worth it for you guys. Otherwise, it's I don't really care too much about the kickback. What do you get? Your friends will get 10% off the contract. Oh, you get 10% off your fees. 
and seven days of premium, that's all right. Okay, well, I'll throw it on there. Like I said, with any referral codes, I don't care if you use them or not, but they give you some kickbacks if you do. Uh, the code for the referral on that one is the end part. But Femex is one that you would use for, like, intraday. Sorry, not to blast you with referrals. That's not the purpose, but when I have questions, I like giving you guys links. And if I can give you links, I give you kickback. That's even better. <laughs> I mean, it's nice that I get a kickback, too. Don't get me wrong. I'm cheap, and I like extra things in my pocket, too, but... $5 on Sheeb yesterday would have been $20 today. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm throwing it out there. Anyway, we are past 10 o'clock. Get those last questions in. We'll get those covered for you. Um, and we'll go from there. I th Yeah, for me, I think the next big mover on the crypto side of things, given that, well, aside from the big movers on the NASDAQ and the S&P and all those, the next big mover, I think, is going to be Doge or one of the other meme coins that they can dump their SHIB profits into. I think it's a logical thing. Uh, and Doge is propped up for a really nice move here. The index market's finally rotating back up and making their decision. That pullback on that last move to the POC was the alligator's mouth snapping shut. Wasn't sure about it, but in hindsight, we can see that that is the case. Uh, crude oil's rolling its way back up, but this could be a minute. That'll do it. Let's roll over into the extended session, get those questions taken care of. As always, if you have any questions or anything that I may have missed, uh, feel free to shoot me a message on uh, in the comments on YouTube, or you can always email me, jhb at ssftg.com. If you're going to be hanging out for the extended session or you're on the VIP uh, private Zoom meeting thing, uh, just hang out, listen to me babble to myself for a second, and then we'll, uh, we'll roll over. For the rest of you, though, I hope you had a great day of a uh, great morning, at least, of trading. And, uh, yeah, that'll do it. Enjoy the rest of the day. I hope you had a fantastic one. Oh, uh... Hang on a second. I always forget. The live chat versus top chat hides chats. Hang on. Okay, good. I got all those. Uh, how can I get into the extended session? Uh, on YouTube, to join the extended session, that's joining as a member on YouTube. It's the join button underneath the stream. It's four ninety nine. dollars <laughs> so, uh, But that gets you into the extended session where we spend another like, 30, 45 minutes looking for extra setups, Q&A, all kinds of cool stuff. And it gets you in the Discord chat room and a little bit more behind the scenes too. It's not necessary, of course, uh, but it's definitely a really cool way to get a bit more. <laughs> so if you're interested, that's where we're going to be hanging out. Um, is uh, is over in the extended session. So that's just a matter of joining as a member. Of course, VIPs and members of, of SSFTG have access to it already. So lots of different ways. But If you decide to join, we'll see you over there. Otherwise, uh, we'll see the rest of you back tomorrow morning, all right? Have a good one, and we will uh, we'll talk to you all later, all right? Thanks. that over here.